Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Lighthouse, where the light of the Lord is shining on you. God bless you. To all members of the Lighthouse and to our visitors, we say God bless you as well. Thank you for joining us in virtual worship this morning. Listen, I believe that there is a word just for you. And it is my prayer that as you listen to the word of the Lord this morning, you would receive into your life that which God would have for you. Tune in. The word of the Lord is coming at you right here at the lighthouse. Amen. Quickly to the word of God, because I feel a little drizzle coming out of the sky. And so if it continues and it gets a little worse than it is right now, I'm going to shut this sermon down in the twinkling of an eye. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, Matthew, the 14th chapter, Matthew, the 14th chapter, and I'm just going to read verses 22 and 23. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Let me get my phone right. Verses 22 and 23. Here's what the word of the Lord says from the NIV. And it reads, immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. I want you to tell your nearest neighbor, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Let me begin by saying that at the onset of this statement, it sounds downright selfish. Who are we to say that we will take care of ourselves? Why would anyone think that it is okay to take care of ourselves? When a relationship ends, the phrase take care of yourself is often used to pad the pain of the ending of something that was once special. When this phrase is used in that context, it usually means goodbye or I'll see you when I see you. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly what I am telling you to say. Say goodbye or I'll see you when I see you to anything and anyone that prevents you from taking care of yourself. Why is it important to take care of ourselves? We're in the middle of a pandemic. Trump is still the president. Black people are still being killed and treated unjustly. The rich are still getting richer while the poor remain poor. People are still losing family members left and right. Marriages are coming to an end. Children are being born at the worst time in our lives. We don't have time to think about taking care of ourselves, but I have news for you. You better find the time to think about taking care of yourself. Don't just stop at finding the time to think about it, but actually do it. Like actually find the time to take care of yourself. If you allow what's going on right now to drive you crazy, it will. If you allow what's going on in the world to depress you, it will. If you allow the circumstances of life as we know it to steal your joy, it will. And what I've discovered in the 31 years that I've been alive is that life can end at any moment and because life can end at any moment I don't have time not to live my life to the fullest. You ought to honk your horn if you agree with that. I, I, I don't have time. I don't have time not to enjoy myself. I don't have time not to do the things that put a smile on my face. But I can't do that if I'm waiting on everybody else to verify and validate and have opinions on what I do. I just have to do me. Tell somebody, in this season of my life, I'm doing me, baby. I'm doing me. Whatever that means for me, that's what it means. If it's a new house, that's what it means. If it's a new car, that's what it means. If it's a new job, that's what it means. If it's a day shopping, that's what it means. If it's pouring a glass of wine, at least I said wine, then that's what it means. Whatever it is, I got some witnesses on this side. Whatever it means I got to do to keep my mental health together, then that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to let anybody make me feel guilty about taking care of myself and doing me. Fantasia said, I'm doing me this time around. As we look at Jesus here in the text, 
Jesus took the time to take care of himself. At this point in Matthew's gospel, Jesus had just finished feeding 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. Imagine how tired he was. Imagine how spent he was. You know how it is when you've worked all day, you've listened to people complain all day because their piece of fish was fried too hard, their bread was too dry, or they gave them fish and bread and nothing to drink. Jesus said, all right, brothers, y'all go ahead, I'll catch up. When taking care of yourself the first thing that i want you to do is don't move until you are ready the text says jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go on ahead of him to the other side jesus said listen y'all go ahead of me and i'll get there when i get there jesus didn't give them any reason as to why he was not ready to go yet jesus did not explain himself making them get on the boat without him he didn't move until he was ready and for some of us we explain ourselves too much when it comes to taking care of ourselves we allow people too many insights into the importance of our self-care stop explaining your all the time. Sometimes you need to state your claim and stand your ground when you are taking care of yourself. There may be, there may be, there may be those, there may be those who are close to you who want them, who want you to move at their pace. So if I'm writing in a journal every day, then you need to write in a journal every day. If I'm applying to jobs to get extra money, then you need to apply for jobs and get extra money. If I'm reading through the Bible in a year, then you need to read through the Bible in a year. No, no, no. I'm not moving until I'm ready. Maybe I don't feel like reading right now. Maybe I'm good financially and I don't need any extra money if it's going to bring me extra stress. Can I tell you today that it's okay to not feel like doing something. You are not in a race with anybody. You are not in competition with anybody. Don't let the narrative of being busy all the time and never resting or never taking a moment to just be to yourself doing what you want to do is wrong. It's mighty quiet in this parking lot. It, it, it's wrong. It's wrong to wear your brain out. It's wrong to run your body in the ground trying to keep up with everybody and everything. It's wrong because the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And because the Holy Ghost is in you, that means that your body is holy. And if your body is holy, then you would want to protect it and care for it and keep it free from a bunch of nonsense that will cause your body harm. Take care of your Self. Not, only, not only should you not move until you are ready, but sometimes you need to dismiss the crowd. Just type it on the screen, online worship community, dismiss the crowd. Some of y'all are not going to like what I'm about to say, but you're going to have to get over it later. You don't have to answer every call all the time. You don't have to respond to every text as soon as the text comes in. You, you don't have to go out and eat every time you ask to go out. You don't have to go and help every time there's a cry for help. Sometimes you have to dismiss the crowd. Who is the crowd? The crowd can be anybody, your co-workers, your spouse, your children, your friends and associates. Listen, anybody who stands in the way of taking care of yourself is subject to be ignored. Jesus said, look, I done fed y'all, I done healed you, now go on about your business. That's what some of you need to tell your children. Mom, what's for dinner? I don't know. Why don't you go in there and fix me something to eat? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me out here. Uh, tell your husband, tell your husband or wife who's putting that demand on you. Listen, baby, I'll get to it, but it won't be today. I'm taking care of myself. They may have an attitude, but eventually they'll get over it. My grandparents have been married for over 50 years. There are times when my grandma would be gone all day shopping, doing her thing. There are times when my grandfather would go in a separate room and play solitaire on the computer and read his Sunday school lesson and take naps all day. And guess what? They ain't nowhere near divorced. But even they understand that, yes, I love you, but I can't be up under you every day, all day. Take care of yourself.
yourself. I know everybody don't like this today. You deserve, you deserve a day to yourself. You deserve some time to yourself. Your job will not crumble if you take a day off. If you one of those people who have paid time off and you just let it sit there and roll over to the next year, shame on you. Your boss takes time off when your boss wants to take time off. Your co-workers take time off when they want to. And you know they do because you're the one that have to pick up their slack. Let somebody pick up your slack. Take a day or some days or a week off. You ain't got to go to the Bahamas to take a week off. We're in a pandemic. You shouldn't be flying nowhere, nowhere. Take time off to take care of yourself. If you don't do nothing but wake up and watch Family Feud every day on your day off, then do whatever makes you happy. And if a crowd is standing in the way of that, then you need to do like Jesus did and dismiss them. It doesn't mean you have to be nasty when you dismiss them. It doesn't mean you have to cuss when you dismiss them. But sometimes dismissal is in order. Some of you do everything for everybody and nothing for yourself. When I need a break, guess what? Y'all will get on that broadcast. 10 o'clock on Facebook, YouTube, and the website, and Jamar Jones will not be behind the pulpit. I done proved it more than once. I'm a member of a fraternity. Y'all see my little jacket? Uh, it seems like every other week we meeting about something. We, we got to get on Zoom and have a meeting, but guess what? I had to help one of my line brothers not long ago understand that when I'm available, that's when I'm available. And when I'm not available, I'm not available. I pay my own bills. I stand on my own two feet as a and if I need a break, I'm not going to explain myself to nobody. If I want to sit on my couch and twiddle my thumbs on my break, then that's my business. How can you be any good to your family when you're burned out? How can you be any good at your job when you can't function? How can you be any good to those you come in contact with if you're always running on E? Take some time for yourself. Listen, cut off MSNBC and CNN every now and then. They run the same story every hour on the hour. Ain't nothing changed. Trump may or may not have coronavirus. You still need to go vote now and don't wait until November. And the cops that shot Breonna Taylor still need to be arrested and charged with murder. Cut it off. Dismiss the crowd. Last thing I want you to do, and I'm out of here, when taking care of yourself is spend some of your alone time with God. The text says that after he dismissed the crowd, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Jesus understood that in order to properly take care of himself, he had to spend some time being refreshed in the presence of his God. Listen, we get caught up in the business of our everyday lives. Sometimes we go days without praying. We go days without listening to gospel music. We go days without even thinking about doing something to engage our spiritual lives. And I'm here to tell you that you cannot take care of yourself without spending some time with the one who takes care of you. God wants to hear from you. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says in Psalm 23 that God leads us beside still waters. Still waters are the places where God refreshes us. Still waters are places where God allows us to rest in him. Still waters are where we can be in tune with God, free from any distractions. But you can't experience that if you don't talk to God. If you don't intentionally spend time with God. I can't come up here and and preach to you without having spent some time with God. I can't write one word of a sermon until I've spent some time with God. When I spend time with God, I feel stronger. When I spend time with God, I come out feeling empowered. When I spend time with God, my worries and my problems and my trouble doesn't weigh on me as heavy as it did before I went before God. Jesus took time to pray. I don't know what he prayed for, but before I leave you, I have to tell you that when you take care of yourself, you cannot omit prayer. The Bible says that when we pray, we can ask anything and God will hear us. And I want you to know this morning that it's important to take care of yourself, but don't leave God out of it. Drink water, exercise. 
eat healthy, take time to do some of the things that you enjoy. But most of all, do like Jesus did. Spend some alone time in prayer with God. Brothers and sisters, I pray that that word met you right where you are. Listen, just in case you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to extend an invitation to you on today. The Bible says that if we believe that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And the love of God will enter your life through a relationship with Jesus Christ. All you have to do is accept him and believe it and say it out of your mouth. And just that quick, you and God are like this. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is now a reality. Listen, we here at the Lighthouse would love to have you join and connect with us. We're all over social media. All of our uh, avenues are on the screen, our website, our phone number, our email address, our social media platforms. Connect with us. We would love to stay connected with you. Finally, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, or if this ministry has been a blessing to you, we have several ways for you to give. All of the options are there on the screen. And we pray that God would richly bless you for being a blessing to us. Well, it's time for us to go. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here at the Lighthouse.